name is Jana Barca and I am here to continue our Life Right Now series. I am going to be talking about this idea of how do we as Christians positively interact with social media. So what I want to start off with saying is I think social media is actually awesome. I think it is a fantastic way to connect with people. It's really cool because you can literally get perspectives and insights and ideas from people all across the world. I mean, now we even have like translating options where you can read something that someone is saying in another language, you know, from another community and you can get their thoughts, you know, completely streamlined to you from your couch, from your desk, you know, wherever you happen to be. What I do want to do with this video is kind of talk about how we can avoid some of the pitfalls of social media and some of the negative aspects to it. I think that it can become a, a really unhealthy thing sometimes. And so, you know, as Christians, we, we have to ask ourselves, how are we supposed to interact with this new platform? To start off, I want to actually read from a passage in scripture because I think scripture is important when we're looking at how to deal with different things. And uh, this scripture is in Ephesians, the book of Ephesians. It's going to be chapter four, verses one through three. It's Paul talking to the Ephesian church and he's just talking about unity and maturity in the body of Christ and how it is that people are supposed to interact with each other, especially as Christians. And so it says this, uh, verses one through three, it says, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. And he goes on and he keeps talking about the ideas for unity and the, in the call to basically be together and to be like-minded. And one of the things that I think is so easy to lose sight of in an online platform is the fact that just because we're online or just because we're in an anonymous forum or even in a space where we can't physically see someone doesn't mean that we are now not being held to the same standard of how we're supposed to act as we would be in a person to person, face to face conversation. And I think it's so easy when I'm sitting at my computer or sitting behind a keyboard or behind a screen to say things that maybe aren't as loving or gentle or patient as I might say if I was in a conversation with a person one on one and something that I have continuously tried to remind myself of is the importance of carrying myself online the same way I would in person with other people. So that would be point number one, right? To avoid some of the pitfalls of social media is carry yourself online the same way that you would in person with other people. So something that is really easy to fall into online is social media debates, right? Like someone makes a post, someone makes a statement, you agree with it, so you respond accordingly or you disagree with it and so you start debating the point, debating the topic. I think online, um, one thing that I would encourage and one thing that I say to people is I really go out of my way to avoid online debates. Um, it's something that I have found very, very little fruit comes from it, honestly. Um, it's way easier for me to be miscommunicated or me to be misrepresented or for me to misunderstand someone else than it is to actually have a worthwhile conversation. A big recommendation that I'll give to you is avoid online debates, you know, try to stay away from it because it just gravitates us towards that part of us that doesn't want to be gentle and doesn't want to be patient and doesn't want to act in love and instead incites our anger or our frustrations and the reality is social media is actually designed to get as many reactions and clicks and you know posts as possible and so the algorithms are set up that when they see something that could be considered inflammatory or they see that people are arguing about something it's going to actually surface to our page quicker and be all over us and so what I encourage you with is try to stay away from that and consistently ask yourself when you are posting or when you are commenting Am I being patient? Am I being gentle towards people? Am I acting in love towards my brothers and sisters? That is, uh, that is a big recommendation that I wanna give you. The second one is to ask yourself when you are responding to something or when you're posting or stuff like that, are you making every effort 
to keep a spirit of unity. Paul talks about this, and I think it's found all through scripture, right? Like, especially amongst Christians, we are meant to be a people that are unified and united. And I know that there are some things that we have differences on, differences of opinion, differences of thought. And the reality is that existed during Paul's time. You know, there's times where Paul and Peter had conversations because they had differences of thought or they had differences of opinion. But at the same time, Whenever they had those conversations, they didn't enter into debates to prove who was right or wrong. They came together because their spirit was to be unified and their spirit was to be together and to find the truth. I think online, it's really easy for us to, instead of be trying to understand people around us and learn from each other and help each other grow, it, it becomes very easy for me to try to prove my point over yours or to read what you're saying and look up online my different references so I can show you that actually your opinion is wrong and my opinion is right or my thought is right or my way of doing things or looking about things is the superior way. And it can be so easy for us to try to find ways to prove that we're right instead of finding unity with the people around us. So when you're online asking yourself, are you making an effort to keep a spirit of unity? Or are you maybe falling into that pattern of trying to prove that you're right? And then the third thing is, is I want to talk about how we personally utilize social media, right? So I've talked a bit about how we interact with others, but now when it comes to our own personal use, I think it's really important to understand the intentions behind what it is that we're posting. So whether it is pictures that we're posting or memes or jokes or reposting someone else's thoughts, something like that, um, it can be really easy to, to just kind of be laissez-faire with it and, you know, just post something in the moment. But I think especially as Christians, again, we have to remember, like, we are called to a higher standard. We are called to, you know, try to live in a way that is beyond reproach. Um, I, th I think that's true of all Christians, right? Like, we want to represent ourselves well because... In reality, the way we represent ourselves is a reflection of how Jesus is going to be represented to all the people we come in contact with. And that's only broadened by the way that we communicate with people um, online and on our social media. I try to be intentional with everything that I'm putting up there because I know who I represent, right? And it's, it's more than just myself. It's more than just Calvary Assembly of God, you know, like I, I am a representative of Jesus just as any Christian is. And so I try to take that into consideration and just be intentional with what I'm posting. And the second aspect to that is there's a difference between being real and seeking affirmation. I think it's really easy to post something online and make it seem like hey, you know, this is just me being vulnerable or like this is a prayer request that I have and we use that language but then actually what we're doing is saying, here's something I'm struggling with and I feel really insecure about it but maybe if I share it, people will give compliments to me or, you know, encourage me and stuff like that and I think that, you know, there's an aspect of that that's healthy, right? You know, it's, it's okay to need encouragement from other people or it's okay to need affirmation but when we go online to to get it, it can almost turn into a self-serving mechanism. I know for me, I've gone online and I've seeked encouragement or seeked affirmation. I have looked for people to validate my thoughts or my feelings or connect with me or even when I feel like really insecure, I can like try to post something that looks really deep and, you know, get some likes or, or get some reactions online or something like that and all of a sudden my... I feel a little bit better inside. I get that little bit of dopamine that I needed. And I think that that can actually become a very self-serving behavior and a self-indulging um, mechanism that we can fall into. What I wanna encourage you is, you know, there's times to have those real conversations and there's times to be vulnerable, but I don't know if online or on our social media is always the best place to share our most private parts of ourselves. Or I know for me with my social media like I know that I have Christian people who follow me I know I have non-Christian people who follow me and I try to 
find this line between sharing wisdom or thoughts or, you know, beliefs that I have about God or, you know, his word or the church or stuff like that. And also just showing people what life can look like for someone that's a Christian, you know, and the, the joy that comes from following God and the beautiful parts of my life that I get to experience because of his blessings and the people that he's put in my life, you know, and I think that's a really healthy thing. So be intentional, keep things that are private, private, you know, be, be mindful of what it is that you're sharing and the reasons behind it. Um, be gentle, be loving, seek unity, um, and just use, use social media to the best of what it can be and try to leave behind the, uh, the unhealthy parts as much as possible. Yeah.